Hey everybody, it's me, Super Paul Games. Welcome back to Alter Ego. We are... I'm hitting the wrong buttons, apparently. We are in our middle school years. Um, last episode I showed all these stats. We're getting actually pretty good. We just saved the family dog from our idiot dad. I hate to say that, because he's actually been the better parent. Let's do some social things. It is springtime. Springtime for Hitler and Germany. I hope you know what that's from. <laughs> I remember my brother and I used to sing that sometimes, and people who didn't know what that was from were like, what are you singing? Like, well, It's from a Mel Brooks film. Um, oh, it's, it's springtime and love is in the air. Right now we're unattached. Do we get a girlfriend, maybe? You've been thinking about Susie Marsh night and day. Um, and finally mustered the courage to write a love letter to her. Susie is every boy's dream. She's only ten. I thought we were in middle school. But she has the body of an eleven-year-old? You have a letter in your hand. Oh, God. Um, I'm going to be more realistic. I'm going to be hesitant, ambivalent, but I'm going to walk right up and give her the note. Oh, those don't work. Alright, then I'll just confidently give it to her. I like your style. According to your status sheet, your social skills are strong. Susie is flattered, but regrets to inform you that you simply are not a type. How do you feel about this? Uh, I'm crushed. Because I spent all this time fantasizing about her. Seems that your social skills are just a cover-up for a lack of confidence. You're the type who does things for other people, not yourself. Examine this in yourself and see if it makes sense to you. Well, sometimes I like that in real life. Oh, for a second there, it got all slow and I got scared. Let us do an emotional thing. You've just turned off the television set and your room is pitch dark. Though the shadows, or through the shadows, you notice that your closet door is open and crack. You can almost see the image of a black hooded axe murderer squinting at you through the door. He is waiting, waiting for you to close your eyes and fall asleep. In the quiet of the night, you can hear his hoarse breath making deep gurgling sounds. You look away from the door and then look back. It's open a bit farther than it was last time. If you can only make it to the closet and shut the door tight, you know he won't be able to get out and murder you in your sleep. The morning light will destroy him, so you won't have to worry about seeing him when you wake. Um, what help am I going to get? I am going to sneak out of bed so I can go close that. As you inch towards the closet, you imagine the murderer laughing at how stupid you are for falling right into his deadly trap. You'll show him. You lunge towards the closet door, tripping over the leg of the bed and pulling the bed linens down on top of you. Ha! You've done it! The closet is closed. You can finally settle down into a relaxing night's sleep. Now, if only those aliens would stop hovering outside your window, waiting to suck you into their spacecraft so they can examine your brain. I've got suck something those aliens can suck. Oh. Uh, let's do a family thing. There is one more ice pop in the freezer that is being saved for another family member. Your mouth waters at the thought of this cool, tasty treat. Um, I will resist it and leave it alone, because unlike my negligent parents, I can be polite. That must have been very difficult for you, considering your history of untrustworthy behavior. Your appreciation for others increases. Your score in trustworthiness, social, and intellectual areas. Intellectual is like maxed already. Hey look, our trustworthiness has gone up a lot since we were an infant. Parents were like, I can't trust that baby. Like, what? I'm just a baby. Quit being a dick. Mr. Quinsley is the toughest teacher in your school. One day you forget to put your homework in with the rest of the items you need for school. Quincy asks you what your homework is. You tell him you forgot it. He says, come, come now. You can be more creative than that. Why don't you tell me something more unbelievable? Like, Mr. Quincy, I did my homework, but my dog threw up on it. Everyone in class laughs at you hard at your expense. Mr. Quincy gives you a punishment assignment to him in addition to the work that you have not handed in. He says, what have you got yourself in, or what do you have to say for yourself now, mister? Uh, I am going to be angry and say fuck you under my breath. Fuck you, Mr. Q. Fuck you. Mr. Quincy doesn't hear you. That nerdy Joe Robinson does. He says, Ooh, Mr. Quincy, he said a bad word. You know what, Joey Robinson? I'm going to make you eat your own teeth if you don't shut the fuck up. Quincy uses this as an opportunity to suspend you. I didn't, for saying a bad word, fuck you, you fuckface, Quincy. If you have a dog, I'm going to take it and shove it up your rectum. 
I don't have anger issues. You lose out on school time and your intellectual sphere drops. Fuck that asshole, Mr. Quincy. I did my homework. I forget it one day. The motherfucking dipshit. I'm gonna go key his face. You ask your mom if you can climb the big rock in the park with a group of friends. She says no. Oh, that was your mistake, me. My number one mistake was asking my mother if I could. I'm gonna go ask dad. <laughs> Craftily ask dad. That is what every child learns very early on. Mom, can I do this? No. I'll ask dad. Dad, can I do this? And the dad's either like, I don't care, or go ask mom. <laughs> That's the sure, son. Just be careful. You can. We're gonna do it. Dad, give me the go ahead. Dad outranks mom. It is a beautiful day. You can't figure out what your mom was so worried about. You and your friends horse around on top of the rock and somebody slips, crashes it to the bottoms, fracturing his skull in three places. He dies before he can be taken to the hospital? Okay, that's traumatic, but it wasn't me and it wasn't my fault. His mom should have been mad. I was okay. Now if I ever have kids, they'll be like, can I play on the rock? No! I don't remember. Well, unless it was Joey Robinson or whoever narked on me, then I hope he died. The latest craze is wearing a dog collar around your neck with a t-shirt proclaiming your dog name. I'd wear a dog collar. I don't want a dog name t-shirt, though. You just spent $5 on a shirt that says Fifi Rex the Mad Mongrel? Oh. Borrowed one of your dog and have borrowed one of your dog's collars. On the way out of your house, your mom says, You think you're going to go to school with that ridiculous get-up on? Um... I'm going to be inattentive and walk out of the house quickly. Look, I know Fifi Rex the Mad Mongrel is a stupid name, but I don't have a problem with the dog color. That's kind of cool. And you know what? I need to learn how to express myself. Maybe I'm going to look stupid, but I'm going to at least get the confidence of learning what to and not to do on my own. Your mother is furious because you ignored her. <coughs> furious, mother? You've ignored me for most of these years of my life. She tells you that if you want to act like a dog, you'll be treated like one? You are forced to eat your meals from a special dog dish? With your dog name written on it for the next three days? What kind of... That's abuse! I hope it's not really our dog's dish, but... That's kind of cool. I want my own dog dish now. <laughs> I'd put, like, Skittles in it. Like, what a fancy one. That's actually what I would do, though, if, like, I'd had a parent who's like, Fine, you're gonna eat out of one. And then I would have just been, oh, Okay, you're gonna make me eat out of it? I would have just, like, gone face first into it and made a mess. Well, you want me to eat like a dog? Fine, I'll eat like a dog. I'm gonna start pooping it like a dog in the backyard. Hey, you happy now, Mom? Nobody one-ups me. Uh, let's do an emotional one. Warning, this uh, episode contains subject matter of a sexual nature. Let's continue. In the schoolyard, your friends are sitting around discussing something very secretively. You go over to see what is going on, and you hear one of them say something strange. It has to do with the way you were made. Um... I'm going to be unaffected and do nothing because I know how I was made. I walked into my parents having sex. So I'm just like, yeah. You have taken this information aside uh, in stride. You've seen Wild Kingdom enough times to know such things are indeed possible. You giggle at the thought of your parents doing it. No, I saw them doing it. Not giggling at all. I love the social ones. These are my favorite. Marcus Cripple. Is he crippled? And the tube heads are the most popular rock group with kids your age. Anyone who likes them is in. If you don't like them or the new hit song, I love you, blowjob eyes. I mean, blow torch eyes. You are a definite geek. I am unconcerned with peer acceptance. That is one thing is I really didn't care about peer acceptance when I was in school. Um, but I will buy the uh, album. Oh, okay, then I'm not gonna buy their album. I'm unconcerned. I'm not gonna buy it. I'm assuming that my guy does my character doesn't like their music So what if none of the cool people want to dangle stay with you is dangle like the giant jerk-off party They wanted me to be at earlier because I don't care. That's fine I'm going to go into my basement and play Dungeons and Dragons with my friend Nobody gets to be a paladin. I hate paladins. You're your own person. You're your own lonely person, but you are probably a lot smarter than everyone else, too. Social sphere drops slightly. Intellectual sphere increases. Well, let's see. Masked out intellect again. And social is still pretty high. I'm a really social nerd. That's kind of like real life. Um, I'm going to do an emotional one. While walking around the store with your friend, you notice that he sneaks a small item into his pocket. You ask him what he's doing, and he tells you it is easy to shoplift, saying they never check kids. Um. Uh. I 
don't care. I'm not going to steal something, but I don't want to urge him to put it back, and I don't want to refuse to stay with him. I'm like, I don't really care. Just, all right, that's, you did it, whatever. All right, I will urge him to put it back. You refuse to steal and tell him that he had better put it back when he stole it. You can. I can try to convince him. I'm not going to narc. It's too late. He's already a hardened criminal. He sneaks a pack of cards into your jacket pocket. While you protest, the store manager comes over to see what the commotion is about. You see the cards sticking out of your pocket. He accuses you of shoplifting. He calls up your mother. Because you are trustworthy, your mom believes you are framed. Oh, thank God. That is really cool. Thank God I developed a trustworthy thing by helping out that old lady. Mom's like, you yeah, wouldn't steal. No, no. Just for that, I'll make some family time. Your friends are all waiting for you to come out after school. You have a ton of homework, and you've been watching television since you came. I mean, since you came home. On your way out, your mother asks, Did you do all your homework? Uh, well, um, I... I guess I'll be honest and say no. The mother replies, you're not going out unless you do homework. You can. Uh, all right, let's stay in for 50 minutes and fake the homework. <laughs> Fuck homework. I'm never going to use this. You're old enough to know how to fake your homework so that it passes by your mother. It doesn't pass by your teacher. Actually, I used to do that in math class all the time. What would happen is our math teacher um, in high school is uh, for assignments, daily assignments, he wouldn't actually look at the answers. He would just come over and, like, have you grade your own paper, and he would just look at what you got. So what I would do is each day before class, I'd sit down and be like, okay, there's 20 questions, blah, 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 write down 1 through 20, and then I would look, is that a word question or is that a number question? And for, like, word ones, they'd be like, it's true or false? And I'd be like, fuck you. <laughs> I'd, like, write it on the paper. Or just make up a number, and then I'd be like, for self-checking, I'd mark maybe, like, three-quarters of them right or you know, maybe 80%. You don't want to mark them all, right? And he'd just come by and look at the paper quickly. Be like, oh, okay, good. You get credit. <laughs> I was like, why the fuck work harder when you can work smarter? Your intellectual sphere says, shows that you can manage without doing some of your homework. See, I'm smart enough. Socially advanced since you spend time with friends. Your trustworthiness is decreasing, though. Yeah, see, just like when I was in school, I was smart enough. Like, eh, I don't really need to do that. I got it. Um, how much longer do we have middle school stuff? I, I can't imagine it much longer. <clears throat> Sexual stuff? Hell yeah. You're in the house alone while you're exploring the drawers. You notice a stack of Playboy magazines underneath a pile of clothing. I am interested. It is time to examine the magazines. The middle page folds out to show a woman with dark hair and very large breastises sitting on the edge of a bed and combing her hair. Oh my god, I love it when they comb their hair. Her legs are apart. What is your reaction to this? I am aroused. Show me more vagina. Imagine if you ever walked into the room and she was doing that in your bed. You can... Um, uh, I don't want to... Uh, no, I'm not going to take out the centerfold and keep it. Because somebody might know I was into their stuff. You sign and put the magazine back. Why don't any of the girls in your class look like this? Or do they? I should buy them a brush. And they're like, Why'd you buy me a brush? Come on, can I watch you use it? <laughs> uh, oh, oh, I knocked on all these down here. I didn't realize it, except for this one little health one. A very aggressive boy starts an argument with you and challenges you to a fight after school. Everyone whispers about the big fight. It looks like there will be a large crowd watching. I'm going to show up after school. I'm going to be a little frightened, but I'm going to show up anyway. Your anxiety makes it impossible for you to react quickly. The other boy jumps on you from behind and beats you up. The only reason why you showed up was all so that you wouldn't look foolish in front of the crowd. The fact that you didn't chicken out does very little to reduce the swelling over your eye. Eyes, nice. Where's that kid? I want to beat him up now. You need eyeglasses. No! Can I undo this one? I don't want to look like a nerd. The first day you wear them to school, everyone calls you four eyes. Your parents refuse to get you contact lenses. Um... I'm not going to wear the glasses. Nope. I'm going to be self-conscious and not wear them. <laughs> Choose not to wear the glasses. You will miss work that is presented on the blackboard. Your school grades and intellectual sphere decline. Oh dear, how much? Oh god, a lot. That was a mistake. But I'm looking cool. I'm looking cool, so that's worth it. 
Your mom is in the bathtub. Oh, I don't want to think about that. Taking a nice relaxing bath. You are playing quietly in your room. All of a sudden the doorbell rings. Mom doesn't seem to hear it. Um, I'm just going to answer the door nonchalantly. A salesman is at the door. He looks like a nice man. Uh, just a minute, I say, and close the door. You tell mom. She asks you to tell the man to please come back another day. You tell the man, my mom is, mommy is wet and naked and can't come out. <laughs> That'll probably make him more interested. The man shuggles and says something under his breath and goes away. Oh, that was delightful. <laughs> I like that. Your teacher and your mother have trained recipes for an upcoming bake sale. Before you leave school, your teacher asks if you would be kind enough to run a booth of the bake sale, especially for her. Immediately, your friends begin to snicker behind your back. Um, I'm not going to do your stupid bake sale. No, no. You do your own bake sale, teacher. Fuck that. You score big points with your friend. Yeah! <laughs> I'm like, hey, teacher, why don't you go bake yourself some pot brownies? She's like, oh, no, I'm too old for things like that. We're all like, score. And then we played heavy metal music and rolled our skateboards out of there. The next time the teacher talks with your mother, she mentions how surprised she was at your behavior. You're an embarrassment to your family. Familiar fear takes a bad drop. Oh, fuck. My mother can go fuck herself. And she's like, oh, you didn't want to be part of the bake sale. Who wants to? That's stupid. Melissa Harper is the prettiest girl in your class. You've been giving each other the I for about a week, two weeks now. I'd like to give her the D for about two weeks. You all set to ask her for a date when your best friend, who happens to be taller and better looking than you, confesses that he cannot sleep at night because of her. He asks your advice on the best way to ask for a date, unaware that you two are smitten by her. Um... Damn it. I'm going to just have to tell him I like her too. He's my friend. Bringing your feelings under the open prevents you from acting on them in a destructive way. You can agree to both try to ask her out. I'm going to be a good friend. That's what I do in real life too. And say, you know what? You're my friend. We both don't want to put our dick in the same place. You can go after her. If she's not interested, maybe then I'll ask her out. But... Um, that was kind of you. Your friend goes out with Melissa for a week and then reports that she has cheese breath. She has become a lot less attractive to you both after this. Mm. Well, I won't know if she's sucking on my dick. That's classy. Oh, middle school me is so classy. Oh, do I get to learn middle school swears now too? Fuck, 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 fuck. All right. I'm glad nobody walked in while I was doing that. You've been invited to sleep over at your best friend's house. This is your first sleepaway experience. I'm in middle school and it took this long? Um... I'm excited. I'm going to go to my friend's house as soon as possible. Um, and then we're just going to hang out and play video games and stuff. Your choices show an impulsiveness and a lack of appreciation for the security your parents provide. If he's my friend, I trust him. If you have a bad dream at your friend's house tonight, do you think his parents are going to let you into their bed? Is his mom hot? Maybe. I'm in middle school. If I have a bad dream, I don't crawl into bed with my parents. Your friend has borrowed a dollar from you and has been promising to pay you back for weeks. Every time you ask him for money, he puts you off. I am impatient now. And we're going to have a discussion about the money or about broken kneecaps. Your impatience causes tempers to flare between you and your friend. He stops speaking with you and you never get paid back. You bastard! You cheap fool! What an asshole. Well, that's it. You have passed through the childhood phase of life. Family life is progressing poorly. You don't seem to have a strong contact with your family that helps provide the foundation for good relationships later. Oh, God. That's my whole life in real life. <laughs> is that why I can't hold a girlfriend? Keep a girlfriend or a relationship? No, it's because you mostly date whores, Super Bowl. Who said that? Us whores. Physically, you're healthy. You contract... The standard fare of childhood diseases, assorted sniffles, coughs, bumps, and stomach aches. Socially, this can be an awkward phase of life, especially when you hit the ripe old age of 9 or 10. I thought we were in middle school. Should you like girls? Should you not like girls? Decisions, decisions. Judging by what I've already done by touching boob and taking somebody out on a date, I like girls. Uh, decisions, decisions. All in all, you are extremely lovable. You are well-mannered and respectful of adults. I may be mistake mistaken, but I see a little bit of a Casanova in training. Oh, yeah. Gonna get my dick wet. Now, regarding your emotional and personality development, 
You are a remarkably trustworthy young man, way better than when I was a baby. Your sense of ethics and fair play are quite remarkable for a child your age. You have a gentle, easy-going way about you most of the time. You have not had very many schoolyard brawls, and you seem to be able to control your temper, even when girls giggle as you walk by. What? They giggle at me? <laughs> You're about to enter adolescence. It is a somewhat hectic time of life, full of surprises. There will be many, many very high highs and low lows. Each year you will gain responsibilities. You may also notice that people will begin to start forgiving you less for previously described, uh, for things previously described as mere childhood habits. You will be expected to leave your burping, never, and other questionable talents in social circles where they are unanimously approved of. Your peer group. Oh yes, and then there's the matter of girls. If you haven't noticed them much in this phase. Watch out if they've noticed you! Oh yeah! That means the women watch me. I like that idea. That's gonna be the end of this episode. Um, next episode, adolescence! So I believe... What's that? This is the high school years, right? I don't know. Whatever. I'll see y'all next time. <laughs>